Scottish, Joy Moss, Bad Boy MTG. We are just going to breeze right on through the cards that were spoiled from Crimson Vow over the last two days. Just to catch up on where we're at. So let's just dive right into it. Here we go. Dreadfast Demon, 7-drop, flying at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice a non-demon creature. If you do create a token, that's a copy of Dreadfast Demon. I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> it's it's cool. You're creating a token that's a copy of Dreadfast Demon, which is a demon, so you can't sacrifice itself uh, to its copy, you know, cause. But uh, you're going to have to have some other creatures out there. It doesn't say non-token, which is a plus, I guess. Maybe something that, like a token generator that allows you to keep pumping out like a token every turn. There's a bunch of cards like that, especially in historic and other formats. Standard, though, probably not. This is probably going to see very limited play in standard. I could be terribly wrong, but I doubt it. Uh, cool card, though. It's, 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 I could say that about any card. It's, it's okay. I give it like a C, a C minus. Uh, Palinda Sigardiana. Uh, what are you? This is both that color. As long as you put one or more plus one plus one counters onto a creature this turn, it's a guardian paladin has trampling lifelink. Target creature you control with the plus one plus one counters, gain trampling lifelink until end of turn. Man, I really like the concept of counter builds. And I, I just cannot wrap my head around the fact that I always get excited for them when I see new plus one plus one counter cards, but they always seem to fail to be consistent decks, at least in standard, you know, that's from my experience. And I've seen other people's builds. I, I, I've, I've, I've tried them out. I've played them and same exact thing. They're not very consistent. You know, they're they're They always get me excited, but they fail to deliver. Maybe, maybe now is the time for plus one, plus one counter builds. This card would be pretty cool. It's a four drop for four. It's got some sweet upside. I don't know if counter builds are going to be there, man, but we'll see. We'll see. Brian Comer. When Brian Comer enters the battlefield or becomes a target of an aura spell, create a 1-1 one, one white flying uh, spirit creature token. It's got Disturb for 2, so it transforms into Enchant Creature whenever Brian Board uh, uh, Gift enters the battlefield or Enchanted Creature becomes a target of an aura spell. Create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. If Brian Bound Gift would be to exile it. Um, it's a 1-1... One, one. You can continuously target that, I guess. You know, even putting auras on it and other crap and making this thing bigger while still getting 1-1 one, one creatures, 1-1 uh, one, one spirit creature tokens out there, then having some kind of anthem effect to pump up your spirits, that could be cool. We'll see what's up. Uh, Twin Blade Geist. Geist. Okay, double strike, disturb for three. Probably get an aura that gives double strike. Yep, aura with double strike on the other flip side. There's the enchant creature. Enchant creature has double strike. <sighs> limited kind of stuff, man. But it's a spirit. Maybe not. I mean, I could be wrong about this. Ulvenwald Oddity. Look at this behemoth. Trample in haste. It's a four drop only. And a four four with trample in haste. Interesting seeing green getting so much love from the haste ability over the past few years. It wasn't something we always saw. It did exist, but I feel they're just dumping it on it lately. You know, it's like every set has a few cards with haste in green. Interesting stuff. You transform Uvenwald Oddity, some kind of crazy behemoth, man. Um, it ends up becoming an 8-8 with Trample and Haste and gives other creatures you control plus one, plus one, and they have Trample and Haste. That is freaking cool. That would be fun, like in Brawl, you know, Commander or whatnot. Probably even uh, just uh, standard. It might even see some play. It's a 4-4, not bad. It dodges a lot of, you know, removal. We'll see. Vile Spawn Spider, Reach at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card, sure. For four, sacrifice Files One Spider. Create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. Activate only as a source. So you only have two drop to two, three. Creatures are so much more powerful now than they were before, man. It's insanity. Um, just this little uncommon back in the day, like early 90s, this would have been like a rare and would have seen a hell out of play. <laughs> you know, or yeah, it would just be kind of busted. Probably would have got banned back in the day, maybe. I don't know. Call me crazy. But uh, interesting, interesting. Mill in green is also taking off a lot. Not that it's never been there, but it seems more and more we're getting some mill. It's usually splashed with blue, but yeah. Uh, Toxreel, the Corrosive. This one I like. This thing is a game finisher, man. Uh, Toxreel, the Corrosive right here. Seven drop. Slug Horror. At the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. 
that's sick. You're gonna like ki you're gonna kill your opponents, bro. Your creatures, your opponents' creatures. At the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. So you're continuously doing that each turn, just wearing them down with the minus one, minus one counters on them. And then whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, you get to create a one one black slug creature token. Your opponent has to deal with this, or they are going to die. Not only that, but it also for deuce, one blue, one black, sacrifice a slug, draw a card. It's it's got a card engine, a draw. It's got a draw engine built into it. That's sick. Very very good card. Um, yeah, that is a sick sick card. People are gonna use that as their commander. Brawl, sure, why not? Uh, Kessiv Wolf Rider. My only stipulation, or not stipulation. Um, what I don't like about this, it's not a wolf. Had it been a wolf, a one drop wolf in red like this, this thing would have saw a hack ton of play. But not a wolfy. Or werewolf. So it's got menace, and then for three, you get to exile three cards from your graveyard, create a three-two red wolf creature token. That's cool. Um, it's cool. You got to tap it, unfortunately, but still, it couldn't have been a wolf. I don't know. Angelic quartermaster, great for limited. When angelic quartermaster enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two other target creatures. Three-three. If it was a four-drop, yeah, sure, would have saw some uh, tournament play, maybe, maybe, but no. Lunar Rejection, two drop. Cleave, you may cast this spell for its cleave cost if you do remove three words in square brackets. I like this cleave thing with these whole removing, remove the brackets if you pay the extra cost. Uh, return target creature to its owner's hand. If you don't pay the cleave cost just for two, then you get a return target wolf or werewolf creature to its owner's hand. Also, draw a card. Pretty good. Fearful Villager, three drop. Menace, uh, daybound. Yeah, sure, it's a little common there. This guy, what are you doing all this text on you, fella? Let's take a look. Uh, when enters the battlefield, mill three. Okay, it's a one, two. When die, when it dies, you may exile it. If you do, return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. At least it doesn't say return a graveyard, from, return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. We're seeing a lot of that lately in Crimson Vow. We're still seeing a lot of stuff returning cards to your hand from the graveyard also. Interesting. Um, it's a zombie. Excuse me. It is a zombie. We'll see what becomes of it. I don't know. Maybe something. We'll see. Returning creatures uh, to your hand and then playing them again is, also, is always cool. Pack Song Pup. Beginning of combat on your turn if you control another wolf or werewolf. By the way, this is magicspoiler.com, by the way, that we're using right now. So appreciate it. Um, yeah, because I didn't have a lot of time to build a whole video around this. Trick or Treat is literally like an hour away. Got to get my son ready. I know. It's crazy. Got him a little costume. He's going to love it. Moving forward. Okay. Pack Song Pup. Uh, you're going to comment on your turn. If you control another wolf or werewolf, put a plus one, plus one counter on Pack Song Pup. That's cool. It keeps getting bigger. When Pack Song Pup dies, you gain life equal to its power. Eh. Uh, cool against Burn, but then Burn's just going to kill this thing right away because we're not going to deal with it, and it only takes one little hit to kill it the second it drops, so we'll see. Here is Diablo. I like that, man. Give me some hot sauce. Fiery Diablo. Uh, Diablo, haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Frantic Devils gets plus two, plus two to one of turn. Great and limited. It's a five drop. No way in heck this is going to see any kind of competitive play. If it does, um, slap me right in, in, in the Tuesday testes, man. Okay. Uh, Rending Flame, three drop. Deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that permanent is a spirit, Rending Flame also deals two damage to that permanent controller. That's cool. Be a great sideboard card for, uh, uh, for red. Maybe not even. Maybe just main board it. Um, if it's at any target, that would be just insanity, but it does not. Uh, then we have Sam Cemetery Protector, 4-drop, Flash, Human Soldier. When Cemetery Protector enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever you play a land or cast a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. That is pretty interesting, to say the least. And the Flash on it. You to exile a card from the graveyard when you play a land or cast a spell. If it shares a card type, it takes out a card. I mean, you can get some serious advantage with the humans there, man. Yeah. Whenever you play a land or cast a spell, that's sick. But, of course, it has to match up, you know. 3-4. That's going to see a lot of play. I just got a feeling. I got a feeling. Uh, Valorous Stance, 2-drop. Choose one target creature against indestructible until end of turn. Or destroy a target creature with toughness for greater. It's an uncommon. Innocent Traveler. At the beginning of your upkeep, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If no one does, transform Innocent Traveler. So if no one sacrifices, what happens? Flying. Malicious Invader gets plus 2 plus 0 as long as an opponent controls a human. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. Ah, oh, that's a 4-drop, though. Oh. But it could be a 5-3 in the sky. Your opponent better answer that within a few turns or he's going to get whacked. 
Uh, very interesting. Extremely good for limited. I like that he's just like, like this little human chick, just, you know, all innocent, and then she just comes out. Ah, frightening. Four drop, what is this in blue? Engulfing Tide. Each player chooses a non-land permanent they control. Return all other non-land permanents to their owner's hand. Then draw a card for each opponent with more cards in hand than you. Non-land permanent they control. Return all other non-land. That's annoying. Owner's hand. Then draw a card for each opponent with more cards in hand than you. Sure. Um, it's a sorcery, though. Downside, but sure. Cool card. Then we have Bioloom Egg. I don't know what to make of that one yet. Three drop. Um, when Bioloom Egg enters the battlefield, scry two. When you do, sacrifice Bioloom Egg. Return it to the battlefield. Transform it under its under control at the beginning of the next end step. Yep, end step. Sacrifice two islands. Bioloom Serpent can't be blocked this turn. Sick. Way to close out a freaking game. If you could protect that thing, you're going to close out the damn game really quick, man. Unless they got some life gain. Uh, that's an interesting concept. I like the, I like this card. I think it's cool. The Scry 2 helps a lot, too. Investigator's, Investigator's Journal. Uh, it's uh, Artifact Clue, 2 drop. Investigator's Journal enters the battlefield with a number of suspect counters on it, equal to the greatest number of creatures a player controls. Okay, so Commander, I mean, you know, this thing. For Deuce, remove a suspect counter from Investigator's Journal, draw a card. For do sacrifice investigative journal draw a card. So once it's all spent up, then you can just sacrifice it and get your last little card drop. That's cool, you know, for your little control builds and whatnot. Maybe even an artifact build might want something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Kindly Ancestor. Lifelink and Disturb. It's a 2-3. What do you transform into? Creature has Lifelink. I like that, man. That's Those are fun little cards. Uh, here's Dormant Grove. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then if that creature has toughness six or greater, transform Dormant Grove into this three, six. Vigilance. Other creatures you control have Vigilance. Vigilance? Yeah. I like Vigilance. Vigilance was so good back in the day that I, like, basically the freaking Sarah Angel had to be dealt with, you know. Uh, or was going to get banned. Wasn't it banned or some cards around it? They, they, they specifically made cards to kill Sarah Angel. I think I remember this because it was that good of a card when it first came out. But you don't see a lot of crazy vigilant decks, Vigilance decks really taking off and doing a whole lot lately, but it is what it is. Garolf, Visionary Stitcher. Zombies you control have flying. Uh-oh. Human Wizard in blue. Uh, for one blue. Tap, sacrifice another non-token creature. Create an an XX blue zombie creature token with X as a sacrifice creature's toughness. Put it with that crab. That's a 017. You got yourself a fun little combo there. Moving forward. Mind Leech Ghoul Exploit for Deuce. Uh, exploit. What is that again? When this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. When Mind Leech Ghoul exploits a creature, each opponent exiles a card from their hand. That is some sweet art, dude. Look at that. Is that someone in her mouth? In his mouth? Sure. No idea. What is this? Let's find out together. Sewer Stalker. Can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone. It's a 3-3, three, 4 three, to bring out. And then it can transform into the Aura from the graveyard. You can cast it from the graveyard. Enchanted Creature can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone. Okay. Interesting. Then we have Halana and Alana, partners. Look at these two. Alana Hana. Halina Hana. Okay. First Strike and Reach. It's a 4-drop. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus 1, plus... Put Put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control where X is Helena and Alina's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. There's a four drop, though. You know, it's got three toughness. Dies to removal. You know, all that good stuff. Arc Ghoul of Throbbing. Whenever Arc Ghoul of Throbbing or another zombie you control dies, look at the top card of your library. If it's a zombie card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't, put the card into your hand. Let me put it in your graveyard. That's a great way just to filter through your deck and all that craziness. Get certain cards you want in the graveyard. Get certain cards you want in your hand. Uh, this card, I believe, will see play. Hallowing Haunting, 4-drop. As long as you control 7 or more enchantments, creatures you control have flying and vigilance. 7 or more enchantments? Well, that's asking a lot. But with all these cards that are allowing you to cast this aura from the graveyard, I mean, those enchantments... You know, there's going to be a lot of those going around. Maybe. Seven's a lot, guys. Don't get crazy. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a white spirit cleric creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of spirits you control. That's annoying. 
you know, people are going to be running enchantment hate for sure. Then we have this guy. What is this guy all about? Concealing curtains. Uh, defender for two colorless and a black. Transform concealing curtains. Activate only as a sorcery. When this creature transform, target opponent reveals their hand. Choose a non-land card from it. If you do, that player discards that card, then draws a card. What's the casting? A one. Million three. That's not bad. Player discards that card. Then draws a card, but then they draw a card. I mean, you're getting rid of something important in their hand, I suppose. But there is a slight drawback. You're giving them some card draw. Then we have Path of Peril. Cleave. Was it Pearl? No, Peril. It's got Cleave for six. Destroy all creatures with mana value two or less. You pay the Cleave cost for six. You just destroy all creatures. Uh, three drop. Uh, we'll board wipe all the two or less. That's kind of cool. Okay. Dawnheart Geist. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain two life. Sure, that's not bad. That's cool. Maniform Hellkite. What kind of sick dragon we got here, buddy? Flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX Red Dragon Illusion. Creature token with flying in haste, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. Exile that token at the beginning of the next end step. That is pretty sick. If that sucker had haste, man, well, I mean, doesn't... I always say that. If it had haste, though... That would fit great into, like, a burn deck, you know, like, in my opinion, you know, because then you get all these other little things that are kind of acting hasty. They are acting hasty. They are acting burning. They're just going right to your opponent's face every turn. Pretty cool, though. Um, yeah, that's a mythic, by the way. We'll see how good it is. Then we got this little fella. What are you doing there, fella? Voice of the Blessed. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on uh, Voice of the Blessed. Okay, more counter stuff. As long as Voice of the Blast has four more Pulse Pulse counters on it, it gains Flying and Vigilance. Ten or more Pulse Pulse counters, it, it gains Indestructible. Oh, that's going to be annoying to deal with. It is two in white to cast. Uh, cool card. That one really is neat. That thing gets uh, will get out of control. You let it uh, You let it do so. Chandra Dress to Kill. Three drop Planeswalker. Add a red Chandra... Dress to kill deals one damage to up to one target player or planeswalker. That's cool. You get the one damage, something, which can deal with something, maybe. Maybe even finish off your opponent. But and it can hit a planeswalker. Does not hit a creature. Interesting. But you do get to add uh one red mana, so that's something. Exile the top card of your library. If it's red, you may cast it this turn. So in mono red decks is probably the only place you really want to see this. Minus seven, exile the top five cards of your library. You may cast red spells from among them this turn. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a red spell. This emblem deals X damage to any target where X is the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. Shadow Dress to Kill. You gotta always be weary of these three drop planeswalkers. They can wreck, wreck formats really quick, man. We'll see what's up. I don't know if this one's gonna wreck, though. This one's just kind of... It, it's good, good momentum, you know? Runo Stormkirk, 3-drop, legendary creature, vampire cleric, flying. Enters the battlefield, put up to one target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If a creature card with the mana value, 6 or greater is revealed this way, transform. 6 or greater. Oh, man. Oh, it's a 3-5. Not crazy. Uh, Lord of the Deep attacks. Create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of another target attacking creature. If that creature is a kraken... Leviathan, Octopus, or Serpent. Great. Two of those tokens instead. Whoa. That's pretty dirty, man. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty dirty. Uh, then we got Skulking Killer. Enters the battlefield. Target creature and opponent controls. Gets minus two, minus two. It's one of turn if that opponent controls no other creatures. It's a four drop. Yeah, four two. I don't know about that. Someone took a bite out of this card right here. Um, we'll see what this is really quick. A uh, whole lot of text. Soul Code Plate. Uh, two drop enters the battlefield with three omen counters. For deuce, ta uh, tap, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your graveyard. Sure. Um, whenever a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere, remove an omen counter from uh, it. Then if there are no omen counters on it, transform. It becomes just three, two. Can only block creatures with flying for four. Draw two cards, discard a card. That's kind of cool, the little card draw there. It's for an uncommon. That's pretty legit. For an uncommon, it's not bad at all. Then we got this behemoth, future sighting. Target player shuffles up to four cards from their graveyard to their library. Look at the top four cards of your library. 
Put one of them in your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. Uh, this thing is stupid. Um, I think it's a little too powerful. Alchemist Gambit. For three, take an extra turn after this one. During that turn, damage can't be prevented. At the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. And you exile Alchemist Gambit. But if you pay the cleave cost, you get another extra turn. Do we need another card that gives extra turns? I mean, no, we really did not. Especially in these colors. Oh, my God. Um, that's pretty nuts, man. So, for three, get an extra turn. In standard. It's happened before. I get it. But you lose the game. Pretty big downside at the same time. Um, pay the cleave cost, though. Late game. Probably going to close it out. All right. Uh, that is all that. I think we have a few more here to go through. What is this all about? Dread. Uh, fug you. Cleave 2B. Target player reveals their hand. You choose a nine land card from it with mana value to your left. That player discards that card. Uncommon sorcery. Yeah, that's weak. That's weak. Weak. Maybe. We'll see. Vampire's Vengeance deals two damage to each non-vampire creature. Create a blood token. All right, there, there's your push for vampires right there. Uh, change of Fortune. Discard your hand and draw a card for each card you've discarded this turn. That's kind of cool. It's a rare to sorcery, though, you know. If, give me an instant like that. That'd be funner. Volatile Arsonist. Here's our mythic. Human Werewolf. 4-4 four, four with Menace and Haste. Good for you, Haste Boy. When a Volatile Arsonist attacks, it deals one damage to each of up to one target creature, up to one target player, and up to one target Planeswalker. And then you can transform it. Menace Haste 5-5. Five, five. When it attacks, it does two damage to each. Okay, instead of one damage, it's two damage. That thing, that, that reminds me of Rage back in the day. Remember the card game Rage? That's pretty cool. Uh, fun card right there. That 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 thing's gonna 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 kick some butt right there, man. Pretty cool. Um, Werewolf Tribal. It's already a thing, but now it's got some more support. Geist Light Snare. The spell costs one less to cast if you control a spirit. It also costs one less to cast if you control an enchantment. Counter target spell, unless the controller pays three. Oh, annoying. Okay, that's a good card. Dorothea, Vengeful Victim. Uh, when Dorothea, Vengeful Victim attacks, or... Okay, I think we already went over all these, right? Yeah. Did we? I think so. By invitation only. Um, did we go over these? Maybe not. Oh, my God, there's a lot here. Okay, we did not go over these. I got to speed it up, though. I, it's about to be Halloween. I got to take my son trick-or-treating. Uh, I hear I'm getting anxious. So, okay. Dorothea... Wedding invitation. Um, it's a common. Who cares? This uh, this sweetheart right here, though, I think we did review already. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever this creature attacks, create a 4-4 four, four white spirit creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking. Sacrifice token. That's sick. We did discuss that one. That one's gross. Dominating vampire. 3-3. Three, three. When dominating vampire enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of vampires you control until end of turn. Untap that creature. Gains haste. That's a cool card. Probably see a bunch of three ofs of that running in builds. Then we got Grawlnock, the Grawlnock, the Omnivore, four drop frog. Whenever a frog you control attacks, mill three cards. Whenever a permanent card is put into a, uh, your graveyard from your library, exile with a crow counter on it. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards you own in exile with crow counters on them. Well, that frog is legendary, man. That's the least we can say about it. Uh, Demonic Bargain, uh oh. Exile the top 13 cards of your library, then search your library for a card. Put that card into your hand and shuffle. Better hope you're not up against a mill deck. All right, that's all I got to say on that one. Wedding announcement three drop. How beautiful. At the beginning of your end step, put an invitation counter on wedding announcement. If you attacked with two or more creatures this turn, draw a card. Otherwise, create a 1 1 white human creature token. Then, if wedding announcement has three or more invitation counters on it, transform it. This will be a deciding factor if this card's good or not. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. That's an anthem. It's not even vampire. It's all creatures you control. That's kind of cool. Um, if you attack with two more creatures, turn drawing a card. Yeah, you got car you got drawing cards there too. You have to attack with two creatures. I'm so glad it doesn't say three creatures on there because I've seen that before and didn't. It's not always the best. Two creatures is 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 not bad. That's easy to pull off. Other creature uh, uh, otherwise create a one one white. Even that's this is a cool enchantment. That's going to see a lot of play. Garen freaking teed. By invitation only, choose a number between 0 and 13. Each player sacrifices that many creatures. It's a 5 drop. I like that they're sacrificing it. So that'll like kill like indestructible and crap like that, which is pretty legit. 
Um, I, I like that kind of card. Anji, Maid of Dishonor. Anji, you're back, sweetheart. What do you got here? When Anji, Maid of Dishonor, and or one of our other vampires enter the battlefield under your control, create a blood token. This ability triggers only once each turn. It's an artifact with one. Discard a card. Sacrifice this artifact. Draw a card. So there's more of that stuff. Okay, Anji. Sacrifice another creature or a blood token. Each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Anji's not too bad. Four, five. Anji's not bad at all. And only has four. Uh, four to cast. Not bad. Massive Might. Uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two. Engage Trample until end of turn. I like that one. It's only a one drop. Fell Stinger. Death Touch would exploit. When it exploits a creature, target player draws two cards and loses two life. Torrance, Fist of the Angels, 3-drop, Human Cleric. Training's interesting. Whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one green and white human soldier creature token with training. That would uh, pair nice with, well, this card, but really not the same colors. Yeah, I mean, it would do stuff. Rot Tide, Gargantua, Exploit. Uh, each one sacrifices a creature when it does exploits. Five drop, it's limited play. Looks like a whole bunch of more limited stuff here. This one has disturb cost. What do you transform into for this common? Chant creature gets plus two, plus two. Eh, maybe. Maybe, maybe see a tiny bit of play. Maybe, uh, probably not. Uh, create a blood token. <clears throat> Those blood tokens are dirty, man. Whenever you sacrifice a blood token, you gain one life. At least your opponent's not losing one life at the same time. This thing's at Defender, 2-6, common. I'm going to go over it. Uh, Sigarda Summons. Creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them have base power and toughness. 4-4, four, four, have flying. Enter angels in addition to other types. Again, this is a cool card, but it's 6, man. It's 6. It's also an enchantment. I don't, I don't We've seen... I don't know. We haven't seen anything this like this before, but... Maybe... This is a big maybe for me. In the right build really in the freaking right build i mean this thing could be gross but six drop man i mean just throw that in commander brawl or something like that but standard i don't know i mean if we have enough control around it yeah then for sure dude you know absolutely uh so got our summons again different artwork interesting okay uh, Millicent, uh, Millicent, uh, Restless Revenants. Did we go over this one? The spell cost, yes, we did. We covered this one and we covered all this. We covered everything here. Okay, now we just finally caught up. You want to see the rest of these spoilers? Go back a couple videos. That's it. I'm sorry if, if you guys feel I rushed. I did though. I didn't really have much of a choice because Halloween's here, baby, and I can't wait to take uh, Jax out uh, for some trick or treating. It's gonna be a freaking blast. Uh, Aiden's out of town, so. Well, guys, this is going to be uh, a lot of fun. I hope uh, Crimson Vow delivers. I hope we continue to get more powerful cards. Um, let's just break the whole format. Who cares? Call it a day. What do you say? <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts. If you like some of these cards, you know, which one do you like? Why? I, I like to hear a little bit of talk in the conversation, or a little conversation and talk, you know, same thing in the comments below. I'm just excited. I'm sorry. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Joy Moss, Bad Boy MTG, get out of here. Skaboosh.